One of the main problems I see is that we're in such a state of chronic stress or it's such alarm mode that our sex hormones are being impacted so severely that we're either losing our periods or we're having very irregular ovulation and thus irregular periods, or we're having a situation where we just can't get pregnant and we get a period every month, we're ovulating, but we're not getting pregnant. And a lot of the time that's because our bodies are in such a state, they feel fair, they feel scared. And so it's our goal, I think it's our sacred duty actually to really focus on how we can mitigate the effects of our stress. Welcome back to the Essentially You podcast, all about reinventing your health with safer, cheaper, more effective natural solutions and powerful lifestyle changes so that you become the CEO of your health. I am your host, Dr. Marisa Snyder. Today, I am talking to Nicole Jardim, also known as the Professional Period Fixer. That's right. And she's one of my dear friends from New York City. I have so much fun hanging out with her anytime I visit that amazing city. But today we are getting candid about how to sync up your period to your life to maximize your true potential. Now, in case you didn't know, we have four phases during our menstrual cycle, and they are menstruation, the follicular phase, ovulation, and the luteal phase. Understanding how your hormones work in each phase of your cycle is key to maximizing the best potential for both your personal and professional life. Now, Nicole has taught women, and even myself, that when we honor our body's innate need for rest and relaxation during certain phases, we can enhance our ability to get more out of the active phases of our cycle and so much more. Personally, I can't wait to hear all the tips that she is going to be sharing today to get my cycle working for me. But before Nicole comes on to share her incredible wisdom around owning our menstrual cycle, I want to share with you a quick resource that I created to support your women's hormone journey. As you may know, I am working on my newest book right now, The Essential Oils Hormone Solution, and I can't wait to share it with you in early 2019. But in the meantime, I created the perfect hormone cheat sheet with my six best hormone support remedies that deal with some of the biggest issues around emotional and hormonal support, such as stress, mood swings, brain fog, and fatigue. And here's why I created this for you. When it comes to having a rescue plan in place for hormonal imbalance, essential oils are incredibly powerful at creating positive changes in a matter of minutes. The results you will experience will be immediate and transformational. And who doesn't want that? Essential oils can be incredibly effective at promoting harmony in your body and mind, regardless of how much you may feel like a stranger in your own skin. These top six hormone balancing recipes address sleep, fatigue, sugar cravings, brain fog, hot flashes, and mood swings. Now today, I already used a couple of the blends. I used my Instant Energy Blend and the Banish Brain Fog Blend because I personally need a little assistance after editing my 400-page manuscript after the last three hours. So I just want to say that I have been using these oils for my own hormone support for many years, and I'm so excited to be able to bring that to you as well. So if you are ready to create hormone balance with powerful essential oil remedies, grab my free cheat sheet. I also have a bonus blend just for you. You can find the link in my show notes at drmarisa.com slash episode 35, or you can just go to drmarisa.com slash hormone blends. I know you're going to love these easy to implement blends on this cheat sheet as much as I do. Now let's get back to syncing your period with your life. Now, before I bring Nicole on, I want to quickly sing her praises. Nicole is a certified women's health coach and the creator of Fix Your Period, a series of programs that empower women to reclaim their hormone health using a method that combines simplicity and sass. Her incredible work has impacted thousands of lives of women around the world in effectively addressing issues like PMS, PCOS, infertility, and many more. Nicole is also the co-host of The Period Party, a top-rated podcast on iTunes. Be sure to tune into it if you want to learn more about how to fix your period. And she's the co-creator of the Institute for Integrative Nutrition's Hormone Health Continuing Education course. 
Lastly, she has been the keynote speaker for the highly acclaimed Cycles and Sex, a platform that is devoted to building awareness and education around reproductive health. Welcome to the Essentially You podcast, Nicole Jardim, honey. I am so happy to have you. I mean, literally so happy to have you on here today. You are my fix your period rock star guru, and we're going to jump right into this. We're going to be talking about how to really sync your cycle in with your life, your menstrual cycle, because it's so interconnected. Let's be honest, we all have one, right? And so it's interconnected with what we do. And this has been a journey for you for quite some time, and you have served thousands of women just really getting to own their period and getting to own their hormones. What inspired you to jump into this direction? Hi, thank you for having me, first of all. And yes, yeah, it's been a long journey, as you can imagine. And I know that's the case for so many of us who do this kind of healing work. And for me, I feel like I was the most unlikely candidate (laughs) to get into this industry. But it really started so long ago. I was a teenager. I really had no idea what the hell was going on with my body, as is the case with most teenagers. I mean, you're just eating French fries and drinking Cokes and not really understanding anything about life (laughs) or your hormones. And so for a long time, I had horrible periods. I mean, the kind that make you pass out from the pain or make you want to throw up, keep you home from school like three days out of the month, that kind of period. And eventually I got to the point where I couldn't deal with it anymore. And I went to the gynecologist and she promptly whipped out her prescription pad and wrote me a prescription for the pill. And I was so excited about it because everyone else was on the pill and I wanted to be like all the cool girls. And I ended up taking the pill for about five years. And ultimately what happened was I went from this imbalance where I had these horrible, heavy, painful periods to basically having no period at all. And at first I thought, well, this is my panacea. This is my, this is going to be like, what's going to save me from myself. And so I was on the pill for five years, like I said, and ultimately what happened was I swung from this feeling of chronic estrogen dominance to no estrogen. So by the time I got off, I was basically postmenopausal. And what happened to me was I didn't get a period for many months and I had no idea what to do. I was freaking out. And finally, I, you know, I'd, I'd seen a lot of different doctors over the years for all the issues I had while being on the pill, much less like coming off the pill and not having a period. So ultimately, I saw an acupuncturist and he was this amazing guy who was like a catalyst for my healing journey. And I tried all of these different modalities after starting with acupuncture just to really work on getting my hormones on track and getting my health back on track. And that's really what led me to this. I I was doing film production. That was my dream originally. And then I realized that I didn't care so much about that anymore. All I cared about was educating myself and educating people about their hormones and their health and eating better and taking care of their emotional health and all that good stuff. So fast forward and I ended up studying to be a health coach and I did a a lot of extensive training around women's health and here I am today, the period girl. (laughs) I love it. And so many of us, so many women have similar stories. I mean, how many of us were put on the pill or I was on Depovera, which was just... Horrible um, for several years. And I remember when I finally got off Depovero, I felt like I was just a crazy person. I mean, every every period horror story I was experiencing then when I was on Depovera. And it took me over a year to get my period back. And I suffered from all kinds of mood swings. And I was working at a women's clinic then at the time where I was on this shot and was working with so many other women who were struggling with all different types of of birth control and thinking to myself like, man, how is, I mean, it is what it is, but gosh, it just felt like, you know, watching all these women suffer similar symptoms to me. I was like, gosh, this is the, I guess the lesser of the two evils when it comes to not getting pregnant, but there's gotta be something else we can do about this. Yes. A hundred percent. Of course there is. And here we are, right? Like this is what we're doing. We're helping people recognize that this is not an answer and they 100% deserve better. Absolutely. They do. Okay. So 
we are going to be talking specifically about phases of your menstrual, menstrual cycle. So what I'd love to ask you is kind of talk a little bit about what those are. I don't think a lot of women, it was so funny, you had an Instagram post the other day and my husband gets so mad at me because I'm, I am embarrassed to admit this, but I, I don't mind that my period surprises me every month. I'm just, I kind of just, I don't know. I'm not at a point where I'll be honest, Nicole, as a women's hormone expert myself, I'm just not at a point where I really embrace this whole process. (laughs) I I so appreciate the honesty. (laughs) I'm still not there, girl. So let's talk a little bit about the phases. Now, I understand the phases. However, I just choose to not participate in those. (laughs) Tell us about the phases. I love that. Are you just the same every single day of the month, Marisa? Oh, absolutely. No, hell no, girl. (laughs) I know. (laughs) It's all good. So, you know, it's really funny. That sort of gets me into all of this because I constantly ask my clients and my friends and the women who come to me, do you feel like you're on this emotional roller coaster? And I would say that pretty much 99% of women say they do, especially when they don't understand these phases of their cycle and the fact that everything changes on a week to week basis. And so I find that women say things along the lines of, you know, like one week, I feel like I have it all under control and I'm totally killing it in my life and my business. And then the next week I'm a total train wreck and I cannot keep it together emotionally. And I'm like crying, just a hot mess. And so I always feel like that First of all, we're not alone in this. This is actually completely normal because our bodies are cyclical by nature, which means that they're just governed by a series of hormonal ebbs and flows. And these are responsible for ovulation and menstruation. So when I talk about this, I'm talking about the fact that we have these four different phases of our cycle. And so the first is the bleeding phase. The second is the follicular phase. The third is the ovulatory phase. And the final one is the luteal phase. And so all of these, again, are characterized by certain hormones that are doing their work at that particular time in the cycle. So just to elaborate a little bit, First of all, I should say, actually, I really like to correlate these phases of the cycle with the seasons of the year. I think that that really tends to help people have a more of an understanding about that. So the bleeding phase is the winter, follicular is the spring, ovulation is the summer, and luteal phase is the fall. So just sort of keep that in mind as we continue this conversation. But like I said, the bleeding phase really starts with menstruation. Obviously, you're bleeding, self-explanatory. Usually, that's about three to seven days long. That's really an ideal. That's what I like to see with women. If it's under three days, that could mean something's going on. Over seven days, that's also a sign that something's up. And so, like I said, day one of your cycle is the first day of your period, first day of bleeding. And this it's is... Winter time. It's winter time, exactly. And this also correlates to moon. So this is the first this is the first day of the new moon. So a lot of people like to sync their cycles with the moon. So that's a whole other that's a whole other podcast. But what's happening on a physical level? Your progesterone level has dropped significantly. That's what causes your uterine lining to shed. Your hormones like estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, they're actually the lowest that they'll be in your entire cycle. And also keep in mind too, that on that day or the first couple of days of your period, emotionally, you tend to feel this sense of relief. You feel like you've released something and that's, you literally have, (laughs) but there's definitely an emotional (laughs) component too. And a lot of women find that they feel anxiety and anticipation leading up to their period. And they feel like they could just burst. At least that's how I feel. A lot of other women say that to me too. I feel like I could just pull my hair out is what I feel like. Well, that too. Yes, exactly. Like you want to go jump off a bridge? See, I want to jump off a bridge sometimes. It's just like, get this thing out of me. It's probably the same as having a baby, I suppose. <laughs> Maybe that's a little more intense. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> um, just a little, you know. Yeah, that's what we have today, girl. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> But anyway, so the point is, is that you're going to feel that relief when you actually get your period. And this is the lowest energy point of your cycle. So ladies, don't schedule a CrossFit class on the first day of your period. And also don't go to a networking event. Unlike Marisa, who goes and talks on stage to a thousand people on the first day of her period. (laughs) I just had my my period started a couple, I got, I'm almost, I'm almost at the end of winter over here. And it started Mm. a couple weeks ago. And again, this is so telling because sure enough, I had three interviews scheduled. I had two Facebook lives and bam, my period starts the day I'm doing all of this. And this was last week. Oh my gosh. 
let me tell you how difficult. I mean, it it was just so hard to show up with the energy, the bigness, the positivity, all of that. Every cell in me was faking it till I could make it that day. <laughs> oh, it was torture. And I thought, you know, and then I was thinking about you and I was like, man, maybe she's got a point. Maybe I should have known this was going to happen to me today. <laughs> I know. Well, I schedule. So I always I like three months out every three months or so. I'll make sure I schedule my period into my calendar so that my assistant can see it so that she doesn't go booking a podcast recording on my period or, you know, an interview or something or a Facebook live or something like that. Cause you're right. It's super challenging. And so that's what I say to women, like really consider clearing your calendar, at least of the things that you have control over during this time, because I find for me, it's hard to even string a sentence together. So like you said, it's like bring that positivity, positivity and energy and all of that. It's really hard. It's going against the grain. Yes. Of your period. So that's what I recommend for the winter season. So moving on from there. Well, I should just say really quickly, this time of our cycle too, like I said, there's a lot of things to consider. I really highly recommend, like I said, taking some downtime, really practicing that self-care, making sure that you're you know, on top of your game with that during this time of your cycle, if that's something you can do. And like I said, with exercise, really kind of take it down a notch. It's, it's not necessary to do hardcore exercise during this time of your cycle. Moving into the next phase, this is the follicular phase of your cycle. And so this is, well, I should say day one of your cycle through day 14 or whenever you ovulate, that's really all the follicular phase. So I kind of divide it. So I call it one in the bleeding phase and then the non-menstruating follicular phase. So that's that second part. And really what's happening here is your ovaries are now springing into action. And that's why I correlate it with the spring season everything is new and growing. And so what happens here is that our ovaries are now starting to ripen an egg, so to speak. And it's the beginning stage of this whole ovulation process. And hormones that are going up are estrogen and testosterone. Your ovaries are starting to be stimulated by your brain and they're producing estrogen. That's why it goes up. And this makes you start to feel more energetic and you actually start to have a higher or increasing libido as you approach ovulation. Again, this is evolution's way of making sure that you have sex so that you can get pregnant and have a baby and continue the human species. That doesn't really apply to now, does it? (laughs) So much. (laughs) Lots of women are not trying to have babies. So there's that whole component, which we'll talk about. But anyway, ultimately what's happening here is your eggs are being ripened, quote unquote ripened, and one of those will mature and be released by the ovary. And that's what we call ovulation. So like I said, moving into ovulation energy levels start to go up, your brain starts to function a lot better. So you have a boosted mood, better brain skills, you're definitely feeling more confident as you approach ovulation with this higher estrogen and testosterone. You definitely feel like you could take more risks as well. So I always say to women, if you're approaching ovulation, maybe do an interview like this, or maybe if you have a public speaking gig, or you have a big meeting or something that's like big happening in your life, I always recommend scheduling those things around this time in your cycle, because you're really on your game at this time. And also too, what's really cool is that estrogen kind of suppresses your appetite. So you are not as hungry nowadays, or in this time of your cycle as you would be leading up to your period. So that's kind of cool as well. Anyway, so that's what's happening as we get into ovulation and then moving into ovulation itself, this is sort of like the big bang. This is what's going on. And that to me is like the, this is the most important part of your cycle because this is going to determine when you actually get your period. Because that last phase, the luteal phase, which I'll get into, is actually a predetermined amount of time. So really when we're talking about an irregular cycle, we're actually talking about irregular ovulation if someone has that problem. So moving on to ovulation, we are really at our most heightened energy throughout this phase in our entire cycle mostly. And that again is because of the fact that estrogen has risen to its peak level, so is testosterone, and you really just feel the positive effects throughout your physical and emotional health. And also what's really cool too is that our cervical fluid changes throughout our cycle as well. So after we get our period, it's pretty dry. And then moving into ovulation as our cervix 
starts to be stimulated by estrogen, it starts to produce this wetter quality, more fertile quality cervical fluid. And that is what's going to help sperm get to the egg if you're trying to get pregnant. And what's very cool is if you looked at it under a microscope, you would actually see channels that the sperm swim up. So it's our bodies are, you know, again, trying to get us pregnant, but they're very divinely designed in that, uh, you know, we're, <laughs> we're creating, you know, we're helping the guys out. What's fo- so funny too? We, that's our job. We are supposed to be helping the guys out with everything, including getting the sperm to the egg. <laughs> I, know. I know. Even our cervixes are in on this game. It's crazy. So yes, that's essentially what's happening there. What's really cool too is actually when we get into the luteal phase, that cervical fluid dries up and actually blocks sperm. So there's definitely a closed for business part of this whole cycle as well. Anyway, moving on. I can't wait for that one. <laughs> You're so funny. <laughs> But it's really cool because, in fact, like the cervical fluid, it actually protects the sperm from the natural acidity of the vagina. So this, again, like divinely designed, it's it's incredible. And so from a like emotional perspective, this is like a great time to be out and about. It's summertime, obviously. This is the correlation with the seasons. What do we do in the summertime? We're always like going to new places. We're hanging out. We're outside, networking events, making plans with your girlfriends. All those kinds of things are really great to do around this time. Lots of like high impact workouts or group workouts, physical activity. Your body is really primed for that at this time of your cycle. And then we leave the summer, we move into the fall or the autumn, and this is the luteal phase. And this is the time where estrogen testosterone decline and progesterone picks up. And so progesterone is this natural heat inducing hormone. So it raises our basal body temperature for the remainder of the luteal phase. And so this is going to also stimulate the lining of the uterus in preparation for pregnancy. Again, this is just what our bodies are doing every month. And it's really responsible now, like I said, for cervical fluid changing from this stretchy, very slippery type of cervical fluid into this basket weave kind of cervical fluid. That's what it looks like under a microscope. And it really just blocks sperm. So it just looks like thick and tacky and um, and no longer stretchy. And so what happens then is when progesterone rises into the, in this cycle, we end up in this a totally different mindset, so to speak. We're no longer as energetic as we were, but it brings out our more creative, compassionate side. And what I find is that this is, and it also actually brings out our analytical skills. And I, so I find that this is a great time to just sort of hang out at home, not do too many things that you were doing in the spring and the summer, but it's like a winding down process. And like I said before, you know, like we talked about this second half of your cycle where we have PMS symptoms traditionally, and we feel a lot of anxiety when we're really busy in our lives that of course exacerbates this problem. So we really want to focus on taking care of ourselves during this time, really focus on balancing your blood sugar. So making sure that you're eating a good amount of high quality fats and protein and complex carbohydrates and lots of veggies so that your body doesn't feel like these constant blood sugar swings up and down because that really makes PMS symptoms a lot worse. In fact, I feel like PMS could be redefined as being hangry because the symptoms are exactly the same. So it's really important. I agree. You, right? And it's hard. Yeah. Well, and it's what's so interesting at this cycle is that we, you know, because we're feeling anxious or because we're feeling stressed or we're feeling a little bit overwhelmed, a lot of those emotions are popping up. I find that we get into this cycle. This is, this is usually the time where women are doing the opposite of that. Yes. Right? Yes. They're getting into those sugars. They're getting into that. They're having those big swings with our blood sugar levels. So such a great reminder for this moment. Yes, 100%. It's so true. And that's really important for everyone to remember too. Progesterone is an awesome hormone, but what science shows is that estrogen actually helps to keep our blood sugar stable. That's why we're more able to handle carbohydrates and we're not as carb sensitive in that first half of our cycle. But in the second half of our cycle, progesterone tends to drop our blood sugar lower. I mean, it keeps our blood sugar stable, but it drops it. So 
if we have too much sugar, it's going to raise our blood sugar so much, but it'll crash even harder than it would in the first half of our cycle. So that's why you feel it even more. <laughs> Just like, kill me now. So that's what's going on. And so that's why really we have to be so cognizant of that in that second half of our cycle. So again, making sure that you really try and limit the sugar. And if you really want to have sugar, try and have it in that first half of your cycle. Although I don't really advocate for sugar. I'm just saying I get that, you know, hashtag real life. So it is what it is. <laughs> anyway, like I said, making sure to honor your body's innate need for rest and just like like you were saying earlier in the show, Marisa, you know, when you had scheduled all this stuff, it's so stressful and it, it just sort of makes everything worse and compounds the problem. So really, really, like I said, you know, you could even add your period to your calendar so that you don't need to be juggling all of these different things during this time. Agreed. You know, it's so interesting. I was thinking about even when you, you know how to do things well throughout the rest of your cycle or throughout the rest of your days, that particular day, kind of like you had said earlier, I just couldn't string along the sentences right. <laughs> they weren't coming out of my mouth correctly. I wasn't able to just quick fire like normal. And normally I'm just like, bam, 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 no problem. And man, it was such a struggle for me that day. And it was just compounding. Also, I was not feeling 100%. So I was feeling a little bit under the weather. Plus that, it was just, all of it just added up at once. And I literally, I felt my brain was mush. It just wouldn't work for me. Yes, exactly. That's basically what's going on. And what's really fascinating about this last part of the cycle, ladies, make sure to optimize your sleep during this time because sleep when you don't get enough sleep, you also feel a little bit insulin resistant. That tends to happen. And also our oxytocin, which is the love and bonding hormone, that tends to be lower in the second half of our cycle too. So make sure to get lots of hugs. That's all. <laughs> oh, I was just going to ask if there was any way that we could skip part of these cycles. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you kill me. Girl, this is why you have me in your life. Right? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, I will take the productivity one and I will take the compassionate. I was just looking at the time. <laughs> But I don't want the other ones. <laughs> yes, I, I understand that. I know. They're, they're a work in progress ongoing. So I love that you broke down for us the best time of the month for productivity, for compassion, for communication, for even creativity. I'm loving everything that you're sharing today. How have you really began to schedule your life, even schedule your work around around your cycle, Nicole, and do that with great success? So I have a feeling it takes a little bit of a, a minute to kind of get the swing of things here. It sure does. It really does. It took me a long time, actually. I'm a bit of a slow learner, but and I resist my own rules. But what I have found is that when you're tracking your cycle, so that's really where I start with women. I ask them to get an app on their phone. There's so many. I have a blog post on the different apps, actually. And what you do is you input the first day of your period. And that from that way, that's like your starting point. So you can then sort of get a gauge for when you're ovulating. And this is, of course, for women who have relatively regular cycles. So that's like a 25 to 35 day window or 35 day long cycle. And what you're going to do is you're going to start to pay attention to the symptoms of your fertility, meaning you're going to start to pay attention to those cervical fluid changes. You're going to start to pay attention to the times that you feel moody or you feel tired or you feel anxious or you feel very energetic. And once you can start to determine a pattern in this app, or like you can even use a notebook or your calendar or whatever you want, that way you can start to really schedule things around your life. And so that's the first step for most people. The second part of this is then, uh, you know, recognizing like what, what really works at different times of your cycle. And I think that this is over a three to six month period of having a consistently regular menstrual cycle. For me, like I said, I, I schedule interviews and speaking gigs if I can, if they, if that aligns around like the spring of summer. So that's the follicular ovulation time. And then of course, like my accounting, for instance, I do all my bookkeeping in the second half of my cycle because you're really ten your brain tends to be able to analyze and focus on those things, like these like very intricate analytic details versus like being able to speak. Not so great at that. <laughs> 
And so that's what I've really done there. And for business, you know, obviously I have a business. I do program launches. And again, like if I have group calls, I really try to make sure that those are in the times of my cycle where I feel most energetic and most aligned with speaking to my my women and having like great intelligent conversations about hormonal health and whatnot. So that's what I do. And then I think the second component to that is the food side of things and like how can we really eat to support our hormones I think the third thing is exercise but that's another thing so eating to support your hormones is I think imperative as well so I I talked about this a little bit but really focusing in on what you crave at different times of your cycle and adding that into whatever app you choose to track your cycle with so that you can again meal prep according to what you really want to eat throughout those weeks. And what I find is that I'm not super hungry after my period and leading up to ovulation. And that's probably different for some people, but I tend towards like having lighter foods. And I always recommend eating lots of leafy greens and getting in those cruciferous veggies to help support our liver function so that that then ultimately supports our estrogen detoxification. But moving into the second half of the cycle, it's just like really focusing in on on those uh, more of the sweet vegetables and the complex carbohydrates so that you're not reaching for the bowl of chocolate kisses that is on your coworker's desk or whatever, and really paying attention to how you feel when you eat so that you know what works and what doesn't work. I had two questions for you. One, what is the, because I knew you have a whole blog on all the different apps, but I want to know what is the app that you personally use that you really love that resonates with you? I have been using an app called Kindara for since they came out actually in 2011. I remember seeing an article in the New York Times and they had just gotten funding and they're really brilliant. I really like them because they also come with a, or you can get a thermometer called a wink. And so that's part of using their app. And it's to measure your basal temperature. And so like I said, you know, our hormones are changing, but what happens with progesterone is it raises our basal body temperature. So it raises your temperature first thing upon awakening. And so I use that as birth control and have done that now for almost 10 years, actually. So I'm taking my temperature every single morning and it's low before ovulation and then goes up after ovulation. And so you know when you ovulate or you know when you're ovulating so that you don't have unprotected sex if you're not trying to have a baby. So yes, you have protected sex if you're ha- if you're not trying to get pregnant during that time. And so that's the one I've used and I've had really great success. The other one, I also use, I use something else because I, I'm crazy like that. I love to experiment. So I also use something called the Daisy. So that's a little bit different in that it's a fertility monitor and it's actually got a whole algorithm going and it's going to tell you whether you're fertile or not based on your basal body temperature. And so it, it'll take a couple months to learn your cycle. But once it does, you get a green light for a safe day and a red light for an unsafe day if you're trying to prevent pregnancy. It's it's very cool. Hmm, awesome. Okay. So those are the two things you use. Yep. And then the other question I had is, you know, I was thinking about the compounding force of nature that happens to all of us, which is stress Ugh. and how stress plays a role in these cycles as well, particularly in the cycle moving into, you think about that PMS cycle, the cycle that's moving into the first of your cycle, right? The menstruation, the bleeding phase, working with women, how have you seen helping to remedy stress in some of these cycles or Where does stress play a role in kind of creating a lot of havoc in some of these phases? Oh, girl, that's a whole other podcast too. Yes. So again, what I found is that chronic stress, acute stress, low grade, ongoing stress are all kind of the same thing. They're having the same effect in our bodies over and over again. And they're raising certain stress hormones and certain chemicals within our body that is uh, that are then having this downstream effect on our sex hormones. And that's really what women run into. So one of the main problems I see is that we're in such a state of chronic stress or in such alarm mode that our sex hormones are being impacted so severely that we're either losing our periods or we're having very irregular ovulation and thus irregular periods or we're having a situation where we just can't get pregnant and we get a period every month, we're ovulating, but we're not getting pregnant. And a lot of the time that's because our bodies are in such a state, they feel fair, they feel scared. And so it's our goal, I think it's our sacred duty actually to really focus on how we can mitigate the effects of our stress. Because 
they are doing serious damage to our bodies. And it's just, I think it's unrelenting. And ultimately, when our body feels safe, then it'll know it's safe to ovulate, it's safe to get pregnant and have a baby. I mean, this is, again, evolution playing a big role in the fact that our bodies are, you know, designed a certain way, and we feel like they're broken, but they're actually not broken. They're actually working exactly the way they're supposed to. But because of our modern, very fast paced, runaway train uh, way of living, um, we kind of feel like our bodies aren't working the way they're supposed to. So really, when we think about stress, I think of it as chronic overstimulation. So whether that's like being addicted to your cell phone and social media, or having a really long commute or living in a city that's really polluted, uh, like Beijing, where you're wearing a mask a lot of the time, all of these things have an effect on our bodies in the form of some kind of stress. And so we have to do our best with whatever, you know, we have control over some things. Food is one of them. We have control over, or at least we can implement what we have control over. So if you have, uh, you know, you've been eating a high sugar diet, that will trigger a blood sugar and cortisol rise. So that's internal stress. So you can change your diet. If you live in a city, for instance, where there is, you know, lots of traffic and noise, you could potentially move. I mean, we all have choices to make. And I think ultimately what we have to decide is like, how much are we willing to put up with? And are we willing to compromise our health for life that we currently have? Mm, I love that poignant answer. Thanks. I think that that is such a great way to think about it. I mean, it's all choice. And, you know, I think that you got to the core of what really stress can do to our bodies. And you're right, it is pure, sheer biology. I mean, all all animals, all species, they have to decide, are they procreating or are they surviving? Exactly. You know, that's our body's mechanisms, just like you were talking about the cervical fluid. I mean, clearly there are times where we are like, all systems go, (laughs) swimmers get up in there and then we're like, yeah, no, not right now. So, you know, there's so much biology that goes into this because at the end of the day, we got to I mean, at at the end of the day, the biology dictates that we've got to continue this evolution. (laughs) Right? Exactly. Yeah. Even well, though we didn't even get to the topic of those who don't want to continue the evolution. And that will definitely have to be for another, another, oh, I could just go on with you forever. The last question I wanted to ask you is just one specifically about you, because I, I love how you live your life, girl. I always want to know a little bit about what you're doing. And so I'm so grateful that you shared some insight into how you rock your cycle every month, not only for your, for your work, but also for just living your life in the best way. Um, but I want to know what what is the one daily habit or maybe it's a natural solution that you are doing every day that really moves the needle for your health and well-being? Yes. Yeah, so it's winter hair in New York, sadly. But what I have found is so helpful for me is to just go outside in the morning, first thing in the morning. It's like a recalibration almost. And I live across the street from a park, so I'm really lucky. And I'm able to just like walk across the street and there's a whole... Uh, track all the way around the park. And I just do like one quick walk around. I mean, not every single morning because it's freezing here at the moment, but I literally hug trees. I've always done this. I'm a weirdo. I touch them. I touch the grass. I hug them. And it's really super grounding. And I think that what we don't realize is how completely ungrounded we are because we live under artificial light and we spend so much time indoors staring at our computers and hunched over and we're not really moving our bodies in the way that we were ever really designed to do. So I make it an effort every single day to go outside, breathe some fresh air. Well, as fresh as it can be in New York. You right. know, in your and, concrete uh, city. <laughs> in my concrete city and hug some trees. <laughs> I love it. Oh my God, I love you even more. I had no idea you were a tree hugger girl. I love it. I love being out in nature as well. I think nature is one of the best ways that we really get to recharge. I mean, you think about particularly for us as women, you know, mother nature, and we just, it's just so aligned with, with how our bodies function. And I think nature is one of the best ways to just give you that instant energy boost. So I love yours. I love, I I love it. I'm not in love with everybody's habits, but I'm in love with yours. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> You've got a special, a special, wonderful gift for us that I'm super, super excited to share with uh, with everybody. And it just is in alignment with everything we were talking about today. Do you want to talk a little bit about it? Yes, absolutely. So this is a Fix Your Period Quick Start Kit. And it's a seven-day e-course that I created for women. If you take my quiz on my website, you get the seven-day course. And it's really geared towards you know what your answers are in the quiz. And 
ultimately, it's just sort of a, a snapshot of what I do in my work. So I'm, I'm making recommendations around foods that really move the needle on your health and practices that you can bring into your life immediately, as well as a few key supplements that I think are also critical for period health. So that's really the gist of the course. And it's super easy to understand. It's, it's broken down into three videos with handouts. I love it. Oh my goodness. And this course is incredible. In case you're wondering, I love, love, love this. It is amazing. And there's even again, this is a topic that we are just not talking about enough. And so Nicole, I'm just so grateful you're out there spreading the word. But if indeed you feel like you need to get a better handle of your period and just what's going on with your cycle every single month, this is going to be the thing that gets you there. Nicole, honey, oh my gosh, I was, I'm so happy that you came on today. I learned so much. And I feel like I'm going to take a little bit more responsibility of what's going on with my cycle every month. (laughs) Yes. Oh my gosh. I cannot believe I'm semi-converting you. (laughs) It's happening. You know, I think you put so much value on, and especially with that moment I had last week where I was like, why is my brain a big scramble? And I know, I mean, I, I, I understand the hormones, but I just, for me, I kind of always just want to live in this like ignorance is bliss mode when it comes to my period. I know that's a terrible idea. So I, <laughs> I personally appreciate, and I know that there are so many people appreciating this episode as well, and hopefully claiming a little bit more ownership of their periods too. Totally. I'm so happy that I was with you today. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. And you guys, you can grab this amazing gift in my show notes. I'll make sure that I link to everything in just a moment so you'll be able to grab that very easily. Well, Nicole, honey, I can't wait for us to connect again, but I hope that you have a wonderful day, honey. Thank you so much. You too. Thanks, Marisa. Bye. Wow. I am so grateful to Nicole for breaking down our menstrual cycle that really honors us and allows us to get more out of what's going on with us every single month. I always learn something new when I hang out with her and clearly we have a lot of fun. Now, if you would like to get to the bottom of your period questions and or concerns, Nicole is the go-to expert. I want to invite you to sign up for her Fix Your Period Quick Start Kit, which is a free seven-day e-course to discover the top secrets that doctors aren't telling you about your hormones and how to fix them. So all you got to do in order to grab that quick start guide is head on into my show notes at drmarisa.com episode 35 or head on over to drmarisa.com slash podcast and you can grab it there. Also, don't forget to grab my best hormone essential oil remedies by going to drmarisa.com slash hormone blends. I want to thank you again for stopping by and listening in to the Essentially You podcast. The upcoming episode is so incredible. I'm bringing on my dear friend, also a friend from New York, Dr. Vincent Pedre. Dr. Pedre is the best-selling author of Happy Gut, and he's a functional medicine practitioner. He believes that the gut is the gateway to excellent health, and I agree too. I know that you will appreciate the incredible insight that Dr. Pedre brings when it comes to supporting gut naturally. Well, I want you to just enjoy what's coming up next. And if you have a chance, just take a moment and rate and review the Essentially You podcast on iTunes. That way I can continue to serve you, which is what I want to do, and other amazing women who are ready to become healers in their own home. Looking forward to seeing you on the next episode. Until then, have an incredible day.